Hey there guys, this is Tyler, back with another iceberg video. I've made a FNAF fan game iceberg and a FNAF controversy iceberg, and today I'm going to be presenting you with the Day Shift at Freddy's iceberg. Day Shift at Freddy's is a FNAF fan game trilogy created by Direct Doggo, where instead of taking place during the night like in the main FNAF games, it takes place during the day. There are wacky shenanigans to behold when playing, as well as a deep story underneath to uncover. Day Shift at Freddy's is personally my favorite FNAF fan game series of all time, and I cannot wait to share this iceberg with you people. Now this iceberg was created by Reddit user LeoYoshi54321, so credit goes to him for making the iceberg image itself. Now let me say this, we're going to be ignoring the bottom layer of the iceberg because it's a layer dedicated to jokes, it even says so in the layer itself. Everything else though is going to be covered. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe down below and turn on the notification bell. Also become a channel member if you wish, totally optional, but it'd be appreciated if you did. Without further ado, let's dive right into the day shift at Freddy's iceberg. Purple Guy is Dave Miller. Essentially, this game's version of Purple Guy is famously known as the name Dave Miller. Now, fun fact, the name Dave Miller did not actually originate from the Day Shift of Freddy series, believe it or not. The name Dave Miller actually comes from the FNAF novel trilogy, specifically from the first book, The Silver Eyes, where William Afton used the name as a fake identity after he fled town and returned to it after the murders he committed in the FNAF books universe. Let's be honest, though, a lot of people either only know or would just rather when they think of the name Dave Miller, they think of Day Shift of Freddy's. Phone Guys Phone guys in the game basically serve as employees that, for at least the first two games in the series, would also serve as your supervisor or manager. In the third game, you're the boss, so you basically manage over them. They can basically also fire you too. Now, phone guys in the day shift games are basically represented with images of telephones edited onto stock images of men wearing suits. The interesting part about the phone guys, however, is their origins, which is actually pretty fucked up and sad. Essentially, phone guys in the day shift of Freddy's universe come from the remains of unfortunate employee victims to spring lock failures from various Freddy's locations. After an employee dies from a springlock failure, they would be sent off to the factory associated with Fazbear Entertainment, which is also called After Robotics, which originates from Sister Location. These springlocked employees would basically be turned into phone guys, and they would be placed and stored in the factory until they're needed for a Freddy's location. The factory would additionally wipe nearly all the memories from them, and they would be set to a somewhat scripted manner to be appropriate for Freddy's. The biggest being the inability to swear, as well as all of them having their original names for when they're alive changed to be the name Scott Cawthon, which is you guys all must definitely know is the creator of the original Five Nights at Freddy's series, and it's also an in-joke on how Phone Guy from FNAF 1-3 to is voiced by Scott Cawthon himself. Another thing that carries over in each Phone Guy is their romantic love for Foxy. Fun. These guys are also separated into generations which differ from each other, but especially when it comes to memories of past lives, etc. There are plenty more entries on this iceberg about the Phone Guys and their specifics which we'll get to all of those at some point. Yif the Fox Yif the Fox is a recurring joke in the Day Shift trilogy. It's basically referring to having furry sex with Foxy, yeah. This is basically one of the things that Day Shift at Freddy's is known for, along with the character of Dave. Throughout the series, there are jokes and dialogue about it. There is minigames in the locations arcades where parodies the gift cake to the children minigame from FNAF 2, but instead of giving cake to the children as Freddy in a Friday's location, you're in a strip club, and stripper Foxies are pleasuring either Jack or Dave. And in the first two games, you can actually yiff him. I'm not joking. It's obviously censored, but you can hear it happening. In Day Shift 2, it even goes even much more far with the imagery, which I don't think I can show on YouTube. Hell, it's actually canonical in the game's lore that Jackie Yiff Foxy at an old location, which is an entry on this iceberg. What a running joke, man. Spring Lock Failure in the Day Shift series, when you're having a spring lock failure, which just like the FNAF games, when a spring lock suit spring locks are going loose, you must take yourself to the safe room to bleed out to avoid scaring the children. In this trilogy, there's lore that extends with the spring lock failures of how employees who die from spring lock failures become phone guys from being sent off to the factory post death, and lo and behold, their creation. It leads to fucked up lore, which is pretty sweet, I guess. Cool cat suit. 
The Cool Cat suits one of the two available spring lock suits you can wear in the first day shift game, the other being the Honey Monster who's based off of a UK cereal brand. Now Cool Cat's based on something completely different. Cool Cat is a Barney the Dinosaur inspired mascot who's the main character from a library of films created by Derek Savage, all of which are infamous for their poor and incompetent production quality, poor messages, and also because its creator Derek Savage is not really a nice guy. After what is by far the most infamous Cool Cat film, Cool Cat Saves the Kids, was heavily criticized online by various YouTube film reviewers. Savage would falsely copyright strike down negative reviews of his film, most notably I Hate Everything's review of the movie. He would claim it was because of fair use, but in reality, it was because he was sensitive to constructive criticism and couldn't bear to see his movie get criticized. This whole situation permanently ruined Derek Savage's reputation as well as Cool Cat, and it's presumed that Cool Cat makes an appearance in the Day Shift of Freddy series as a form of parody and mockery. Dave's Offers Throughout the trilogy, Dave will constantly make offers to Jack, most famously Dave offers a way out of Freddy's and in Day Shift 2, Immortality, if Jack assists Dave in killing the children. This includes other offers involving Jack having to do stuff like hiding bodies, destroying cameras, tampering with animatronics, etc. Dave's first ever offer in the series is also Dave's first appearance in the trilogy. In the first game, he's hiding in the safe room on the first day waiting for Jack, the newbie, to hear him out and let him decide what he wants to do. Direct Doggo Direct Doggo is the creator of the Day Shift at Freddy's trilogy. He's also made Dial Town, Faux Day Needs Him, Project Save the Kittens, and Storytime at Freddy's, the latter two being very old games of his. Direct Doggo himself appears in a few occasional moments throughout the series, most notably in Day Shift 2 where he serves as the leader of the Doggos and resides in one of the stalls in the pizzeria's public restroom. Day Shift at Freddy's 3 Day Shift at Freddy's 3 is the third and final game in the series. Instead of simply just working at a Freddy's location, it takes a pizzeria simulator approach where you run a Freddy's location. A lot of the gameplay taken after yet again pizzeria simulator, especially the tycoon portion to can customize the pizzeria to how you want it and also based off of your cash. There are also the normal interactive portions of the games like the previous two games where you have the dialogue choices to boot, there's the flip side which is where the lore happens. It's my favorite game in the trilogy personally and my favorite fan game of all time. The Promise the Promise is referring to how it's first revealed in Day Shift 2 in a minigame when Jack is dying in the Fredbear suit. The real Fredbear makes his appearance and says that if you were to resurrect Jack, Jack would have to put a stop to Henry and Dave's murders and evil at Freddy's once and for all. Needing to constantly return to Freddy's location, sometimes under different names, and save the children. Jack promised, and he's resurrected. Afterwards, he also needs to constantly put tons of orange makeup on to hide his wounds from being in the suit. This promise is a lore point throughout the whole trilogy and plays an important role in Jack's character. Breadbear. Breadbear is the name of a monster character that appears throughout the series. He's had his own shooter arcade game to himself throughout the first two Day Shift games and a slot game to himself in the third game, all in each game's arcade rooms respectively. Breadbear himself also shows up as a physical form in the series, most notably in Day Shift 1 where in the gnarly, soapy, crafty, and bad endings, Breadbear will attack the pizzeria on the final day as a plan conducted by Dave and also Jack if going for the former three endings. Although it's to be noted that for the soapy and crafty endings, it depends on if you choose him or not on Day 4 when Dave is letting you choose between him, Far 4, or both to attack the pizzeria on the final day as a part of his plan to get away. The origins of Breadbear are interesting. Breadbear basically originates from an old post in the FNAF subreddit released around the time of FNAF 4's released by reddit user armchalko that led to his imager post where he made a fan edit of what a fixed version of Nightmare Fredbear would look like. It got the name of Breadbear because of how much the textures of the body looked like bread. It became in the FNAF community a meme and Doggo presumably found it funny enough to put as a joke character in the first day shift game which actually stuck around because believe it or not Breadbear is actually a character you can salvage from the Colorado day shift to Freddy's one location to use for your customizable pizzeria in day shift 3. The only other appearance he makes is a really small one in day shift 2 where he appears as one of the teasers on the parody scottgames.com teasers in the office computer. Matt's a virgin. Matthew Virginia, also known as Matt, is the employee that usually surveys the prize corner. The running joke with him in the series is that he's supposedly a virgin, his canonical last name Virginia even being associated with the joke. Being a virgin is also seemingly how he never ages by the time Day Shift at Freddy's 3 happens, as revealed when you as Jack can hire him to work at your Freddy's joint. Let me tell you a joke. Once upon a time, a man walked into a doctor's office. He said, Doctor, I want to live forever. The doctor replied, That's easy. Just never have sex. The man was astounded. What a virgin.
the flip side. The flip side's an area in the third day shift game where each one night each month, Jack will travel to the flip side. The flip side's a timeless realm outside of reality, and it's the place where lost souls from the murders of Freddy's retreat to, especially when the soul's vessel is involved with something not particularly great, like a yipping. There are four layers total, and each one you progress to, the more glitchy and broken the world gets. Layer 1, for example, represents the 90s locations, layer 2 being the 80s locations, etc. There's also a lot you can interact with in each layer that has its own dialogue like objects. There's also random encounters you have to fight when you're exploring there. The flip side comes with a lot of mystery and lore, and there's characters from the Day Chef series to encounter there like Dave, Dee, Peter, Steven, and especially Henry, who serves as the final boss of the game, residing in Layer 4. It's a huge part of the third game. Also, Harry, Jake, and Roger seem to know what the flip side is too. The flip side is very interesting and serves to provide more lore in a great game. X Icon X Pika X123 X Icon X Pika X123 is a YouTuber who has essentially 100% complete everything there is in the Day Shift of Freddy's trilogy, even playing Daga's other games like Project Save the Kittens and Storytime at Freddy's. He's gotten every ending, every easter egg and secret, and so much more. He's a notable person among people in the Day Shift fandom, so much so that he actually has a name easter egg in the Day Shift games. Some would even say or argue that he's basically the king of Day Shift of Freddy's, similar to how Markiplier is the king of Five Nights at Freddy's. The Safe Room The Safe Room is basically the room in the Freddy's locations where employees are supposed to get suited up so they can perform the children. There's also the place where Dave and Evil Route Jack lure children in to murder them. Both of those descriptions of the room I just said both parallel exactly how the Safe Room in the original FNAF games were used, suiting up and also the place to kill children room. This place is notable because it's where you go to save your game in Day Shift 1, Steven even staying so, which kind of breaks the fourth wall. The room is also unfortunately the bleeding out room, which is where employees experiencing blood loss, most likely because of a spring lock failure, must retreat to to continue continue bleeding out to avoid scaring the children, which is also another parallel in the safe rooms in the original FNAF games, as confirmed by Phone Guy in FNAF 3. This room has been sealed up before in both the Day Shift 1 and 2 locations by a man named Ford Lovemark who's an external conductor for Freddy's. The seal up in Day Shift 2 was also part of a plan by Peter in the true ending of the game to seal up Dave inside for him to permanently rot which ended up failing. Revealed by Dave that three false walls were what was used. 1987 1987 is the year that Day Shift of Freddy's 1 and 2 take place in, which is derived from the official FNAF games. That's really it. I would also like to add that at least in Day Shift 2, the bite of 87 is like a running joke in a way where depending on what path or ending or choice you're taking, something different will either try and or succeed in causing the bite of 87. I always found that funny. Name Easter Eggs this is referring to how in Day Shift 1 and 2, when it comes to the part at the beginning of the game where you have to name yourself as ordered by Phone Guy, basically a username, if you type down certain names, you get special dialogue from the respective Phone Guy that is in relation to what you typed in. Some even cause special stuff to happen like endings, like in the first game if you put down Direct Doggo, the creator of the game, you get the awesome ending. These name easter eggs are usually YouTubers, the animatronics, characters from the Day Shift series, and etc. These easter eggs are honestly pretty cool and it shows that this trilogy is familiar with the FNAF community itself. Far 4 Far 4 is a monster character that shows up in the trilogy, mostly in the first game, where depending on the ending, he can attack the pizzeria. He's also referred to as the Rat. Now, Far 4's origins are actually really interesting, at least in comparison to his monster comrade, Breadbear. Far 4 originates from a Palestinian children's show from the early 2000s called Tomorrow's Pioneers, where it featured mascots based off of popular cartoon characters, Far 4 being one of them and clearly being ripped from Mickey Mouse, and these mascots would teach children themes of anti-Semitism, Islamism, anti-Americanism, and more. The show was highly controversial for obvious reasons and would end up only being on the air for around two years. The show itself has had YouTube coverage, especially by Nick Crowley, which I recommend checking out. In terms of Far 4's appearance in Day Shift at Freddy's, it's similar to why Cool Cat's in the series, with it being that he's purely there for the mockery and to be made fun of, which is hilarious. Buying Cocaine from Toddlers Basically, in Day Shift 2 and 3, you can summon a horde of ungrateful toddlers in the ball pit areas of both games, where if you pay them licorice, you'll be given cocaine which you can get high with in the bathrooms of both games. Both result in both games' variations of the soapy ending. Getting fired gets you killed. 
Now, the thing with this entry is that, yes, you can both get fired and die in some circumstances. Like, if you do a flip in the spring lock suit and you bleed out. However, for, for things like eating the salad or yuffing Foxy, you don't really die. I got a happiest day to catch. I got a happiest day to catch is the line said by Jack to Steven in the happiest day ending when he's leaving Freddy's to attend the happiest day of the souls of the dead children from Day Shift 1. Jack says it as a response to Steven, basically telling him to stay, and Steven proceeds to fire Jack afterwards. Not much else to it. Eating the salad gets you fired. Yeah, basically eating from the salad bar in Pirate's Cove in Day Shift 1 can get you fired by Steven. It's simple as that. There's the fact that if Steven ends up owing you a favor in the game, you can ask him for permission to eat from the salad bar, which if you do that after getting the permission from the favor, you don't get fired. You can't repair a broken heart. This entry is referring to how in Day Shift 1, if you go to the Pirate's Cove and you attempt to repair Foxy, right next to the option to do it, it says, even you can't repair a broken heart. This gives some serious implications in Foxy's past from an emotional perspective, probably had something to do with the fact that Jack has canonically yet Foxy, as we'll get to later, but yeah. What is Foxy's fucks your bitch rapes? What this entry is referring to is essentially that in Day Shift 2, there's a secret image that can appear on rare occasion after entering a room where it's an image of Foxy and it says, What is Foxy fucks your bitch rapes? I have no idea what that phrase means, but hey, it's something. Roger and Peter are in Dial Town. This is basically referring to how both Peter Kennedy and Roger Jones both make appearances in Direct Doggo's other big game, Dialtown Faux Dating Simulator. Both of them can be found together in Chapter 1 in Downtown Dialtown through interacting with Passerby. Harry also makes an appearance in Dialtown, who also resides in Downtown Dialtown. It's cool these three characters appear in this game, and it makes Dialtown much more of a really special game for people to play. Bonnie Face Pizza this entry is basically referring to how in Day Shift 1, if you find Bonnie's face, you have the ability to make a pizza with his face as a topping when going to the kitchen to make a pizza which you can then serve. It's extremely ridiculous. Hell, as stated by Steven during the pizzeria tour, there was a previous employee who did exactly just that, making a pizza out of Bonnie's face. Just another example of ridiculousness in Day Shift of Freddy's. Fredbear's Illegal Level Breadbear's Illegal Level is the last Breadbear level in the first Day Shift game. It's illegal in all 50 states, even in Idaho, especially Idaho. The level consists of basically a hybrid or combination of the previous level and the final boss being the previous final bosses of each level combined. After beating the level, you'll be greeted by famous Irish songwriter and singer Bono, who berates Jack, calling him out on beating a ridiculous arcade game, not taking a second to think of the starving children in Africa. Then Bono proceeds to shoot Jack and you get the Bono ending. There's an entry later in this iceberg that talks about Bono supposedly being the actual boss at Freddy's, which we'll get there and when we get there. Phone Guy's Secret Stash in Day Shift of Freddy's 2, if you go into the office computer and log into Peter's account, which the password's FOXYLOVER123 in all caps, there's a secret stash on the account you can look at which consists of pictures of the famous statue of David, but with Foxy's head edited on David's head. The dick being censored, Jack will be utterly confused and or disgusted. If you summon Peter into the office, you have the option to ask him about the secret stash, which upon doing so, he's instantly embarrassed, and to prevent Jack from telling anybody, he shoots and kills Jack, resulting in a game over. Yeah, it gives more layers to Peter I guess, so hey. Kibble Pizza in Day Shift 2, if you give Direct Doggo in the bathroom Kibble Pizza, he will reward Jack with his own doggo. If not, he'll scoop Jack. The Kibble Pizza is made in the game with the help of Ronaldo the Dome Master, which has a process in the game on how to make it. Pretty interesting pizza that exists. Dave's real name is William Afton. Yes, Dave's name in the series is in fact William Afton. The same name is used in the official FNAF games. Basically meaning that just like the FNAF books, Dave Miller is a false identity name. It's also interesting how in Day Shift 2 during the true ending where the real Fredbear confronts Dave and calls him by William Afton, Dave tells the real Fredbear to not call him that in front of Jack. Due to Dave's false identity, both Dave and William appear separately in the employee logs even though when it displays a picture of supposedly William, it's literally so fucking obvious it's Dave and it makes you wonder how the company doesn't notice. The William William Afton name is only relevant in the Day Shift series when it talks about how Dave and Henry used to work together, especially at Fred Bears, so yeah. The Premature Ending 
The premature endings and ending in Day Shift 2 were to get it, after refusing Dave's offer to murder the children, you must alert Dee at her music box about it, and you and her both confront Dave in the safe room right as he's about to kill the children. Dee stops Dave just in time, spring locks him, and Peter comes in and seals him off forever. Yeah, that's the ending. It's basically saving the children before they get killed, which is interesting. Toy Freddy singing Space Oddity in Day Shift 2, if you have a guitar equipped and wear a suit, you and Toy Freddy can perform Space Oddity by David Bowie together, and Toy Freddy is a vocalist, which, knowing he has a text speech voice... Ground control to Major Tom. Yeah, it's very shitposty, but it's hilarious. Dave was an orphan. This entry is referring to how it's revealed in Day Shift 3 that Dave Miller was in fact an orphan. He would even be thrown out of the orphanage because nobody wanted an aubergine child like him. He would grow up on the streets and eventually meet Dr. Henry Miller at a circus who would fuck him up for life, making him a child murderer and everything. Dave has a fucked up childhood and it's interesting how it shaped him into the person he ended up becoming in the games. Day Shift of Freddy's 2 is meant to be the last game in the series. It is true that Day Shift of Freddy's 2 was originally meant to be the final game in the series. Part of that's probably why the true ending in this game feels very conclusive in tone. Even a thank you image goes along with it because Doggo thought this would be the last Day Shift game he would make, but no, he ended up making Day Shift 3, so there's that. The Nightman Cometh in Day Shift 2 in the post-day minigames, Withered Freddy has a subplot, which is basically a parody of the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode called The Nightman Cometh. Withered Freddy basically becomes the Dayman and has to fight the Nightman. There's an ending in the game that you get by losing said fight, which is the Nightman Cometh ending. If you win the fight, Nightman dies, and then Toy Chica comes in and calls Withered Freddy, aka the Dayman, her love, and yeah. It's very stupid, but extremely hilarious like a lot of the jokes in Day Shift of Freddy's. The Mediocre Ending in Day Shift 1, there's an ending called the Mediocre Ending where to get it, you must start the route of the happiest day by interacting with Dee, etc., but you must give up with the mission. Then on the final day, Farford will attack the pizzeria and then will attack you. The ending screen being a screen cap of a Tomorrow's Pioneers episode, but with Farford's eyes edited red with Goodbye by Danny, but extremely lower pitched. It's a crazy ending. The Music Man is the Ball Pit. Music Man in Day Shift 2 considers the ball pit his nest and that's where he lays his eggs. Yeah, and if you threaten his nest consistently, he will attack Jack. Just casual Day Shift of Freddy's craziness. Old Sport has canonically yet Foxy at least once. In Day Shift 2, if you use the office computer and go through the company logs and select location 69, Foxy's House of Pleasure, it'll detail how there, a customer, who was Jack, did public sex acts with the stripper Foxy present at the location, which would end up leading to the location's closure. Now, in the company's logs, the suspect's name is stated to be the name Grant, but it's also stated in the logs that they were spotted at location 47 in June, which location 47 is the Day Shift of Freddy's 1 location, and June is the month Jack is working there, and it's also known in Day Shift 2 that as a part of the project, promise Jack made to Fredbear to save the children, Jack always needed to hop locations and constantly change his name. Basically meaning that Grant is one of those fake names Jack went by as a part of the promise, all meaning that yes, Jack has canonically yet Foxy. It is canonical in the series no matter what ending you get in any of the games because no matter what route you're doing or what Day Shift of Freddy's one ending you continue from in the second game, this company log discussing on what happened at this Foxy's house of pleasure is always there, meaning it is a canon event. Jesus fucking Christ, Jack. Bono is the owner of Freddy's. In Day Shift 2, there are lines that are meant to touch on how Bono is possibly the owner of Freddy's. One example is when Peter's ripping your red contract, he asks for Bono to forgive him. If Bono is the owner of Freddy's in this, oh man, it gives Bono much more to him than the Bono ending in Day Shift 1. Old Sport worked at Fred Bear's Family Diner. Jack, in fact, did work at Fredbear's. He worked as a security guard. He would end up working there as a part of his multiple jobs he took on to support his sister, Dee, who would actually end up dying outside of Fredbear's. Jack would also meet his end here, too, but the promise happened. Harry is a Vietnam War veteran. 
This entry is referring to how in Day Shift 3, it's revealed that one of the phone guys in the game, Harry, when he was alive, he thought in the Vietnam War and would eventually return home, just to become an employee at Freddy's and die to a springlock failure. It's revealed by Scotty, actually named Rebecca when she was alive, when you call Afton Robotics in the office and you ask her about Harry. She basically explains a bit about Harry's past, including a slight mention of his involvement with Vietnam. There serves as a more interesting lore to this game and one of its characters. It's world building. I love it. An ending. An ending is basically a variant of the radical ending from Day Shift 2, where Jack and Dave get away with their evilry and go to Vegas. If you want to get this ending variant, at the start of the game you have to select to continue from the gnarly ending, which is basically the escape to Vegas ending from Day Shift 1, and then throughout the whole game you must select each dialogue choice that is purple. By the end, you're confronted by the real Fredbear because of how you broke his promise and decided to be evil instead. You fight him and win and kill him, Dave eventually gets scared of you and an ending, well, Dave eventually gets scared of you and the end ending well is basically the radical ending like the same images but with different and more ominous music and Jack looking dead at the camera with Dave looking scared. It's amusing how even Dave, the child murderer, can get scared of you. Old Sport, Day Shift to Freddy's 2 Phone Guy, and the Puppet or Siblings. Yep, Old Sport, aka Jack Kennedy, Day Shift to Freddy's 2 Phone Guy, aka Peter Kennedy, and the Puppet, aka D Kennedy, are all brothers and sister. It's implied in Day Shift 2, but it's 100% revealed and confirmed in Day Shift 3. The parents of these three are deceased, and due to that, Jack and Peter worked multiple jobs to ensure that D would have a good and happy childhood, even if what happened to their parents. One night, Jack would be working at Fred Bear's and would accidentally leave D outside, which then she was murdered. There were even accusations made by others in game that Jack was the one who killed D. Jack would die at Fredbear's too, but would be given somewhat of a resurrection by the real Fredbear because of his promise, and Peter would die by being intentionally springlocked by Henry because Peter was getting up in arms with Henry about him luring children in the safe room. What a tragic family. Old Sports Immortal this entry is referring to how Jack Kennedy is basically immortal throughout the series. This is referring to how in the promised minigame in Day Shift 2, after Jack nearly dies from inside the Spring Freddy suit, he's essentially revived by the real Fredbear so he could fulfill Fredbear's promise of saving the children. Jack is basically a walking corpse. Now he technically dies in Day Shift 3 with a good ending and how he joins in the fire when Freddy's is burning, but it is even more so since he lacks a soul. Groovy. The Music Man was created as a way to avoid getting killed by Godred. So basically, this entry is referring to how Music Man in the Day Shift universe was created by a man named Woodrow, who used him to keep Godred away. But this would fall flat on its face, as Godred would end up taking Woodrow anyway. There's evidence of this suggested in Day Shift 3 within the office. It's very interesting, and later on the iceberg, we'll be talking about this more slightly in depth, so yeah. Generation 4 Phone Guy so I looked into this entry and I couldn't seem to find anything in regards to the fourth generation of phone guys. There's generation 0 to 3 like I explained earlier in the iceberg, but generation 4? I don't know. If you guys seem to know anything about this, let me know in the comments. Maybe I missed something when playing Day Shift 3. Project Save the Kittens Project Save the Kittens is a charity game released in 2017 by Direct Doggo, which served as somewhat of a spin-off to Day Shift 2. This game is basically FNAF 1, but from a top-down perspective, and it's in the style of the 8-bit minigames, and you're playing as Jack. On Night 8, you're playing as Dave, where you must retrieve his lunchbox from the safe room, which he ends up getting spring-locked by the souls, and that's the ending of the game. If you wanted FNAF 1, but with Day Shift of Freddy sprinkled in, well, this game is for you. Dave is a repossessed corpse. Basically, Dave is a repossessed corpse after he would come back from the dead due to his experiences with helping out Henry. He would repossess his corpse each and every time just to assist Henry. It's truly something. The Joy of Creation this entry is referring to the truth already mentioned in this video with phone guys and how if an employee dies at a Freddy's location due to a spring lock failure, they'll be sent to the Afton Robotics factory to be turned into a phone guy for another Freddy's location. There's multiple generations, etc. This process is referred to as the joy of creation in Day Shift 2 after Peter unfortunately dies from a spring lock failure and has to be sent to the factory. It's a pretty messed up story beat in this series and it gives more depth to the phone guys. The Box 
The box is essentially a box that Dave has been said to own. It was first mentioned in Day Shift 2 in his diary on his account on the office computer. Then, in Day Shift 3 for the evil route, when Dave takes Jack to the Faz Bunker, he finally shows Jack the box. The two locks used to represent Dave and Henry, but they now represent Dave and Jack because of their partnership. Inside the box contains souvenirs of the victims Jack and Dave have killed as well as Dave and Henry. Dave also points out that his favorite souvenir of all is a red scarf, which actually belonged to Dee Kennedy, Jack's sister, which is really fucked. This is an interesting take on the box from FNAF 4 for sure. Fazburger was a failure. In Day Shift 2, if you go into the company computer and look in the company logs, you'll see three closed Fazburger locations. The first location's closure was because an employee got a customer's order wrong, which prompted the customer to scream, which then resulted in 10 seconds later, where Bonnie went off stage and ripped the customer's head off. At the next closed Fazburger location, a night guard got stuffed into a huge burger and the next morning crawled out of it completely naked, all in front of the customers. And in the third and final Fazburger location, when the health inspector was visiting, Freddy somehow made his way to the kitchen and made a burger that poisoned and killed the health inspector. After this, Fazburger was considered a failure and there would be no more Fazburger locations. There is no canonical day shift of Freddy's 2 ending. Now, I know what this entry might be referring to, but I wouldn't word it as there being no canonical. I would word it as there being multiple endings possibly being canon, or something of that sort. Basically, there's evidence that suggests either the true slash perfect ending from Day Shift 2 or the end ending from Day Shift 2 is canon. For true slash perfect, Jack is seen to be living at Peter's house in Day Shift 3, which follows the epilogue of said ending from Day Shift 2. However, for the end ending, in the first flip side scene where Jack and Dave are talking, and Dave mentions something happened to the real Fredbear, it shows Jack's evil face from Day Shift to Freddy's 2's end ending, where in that, Jack beat the shit out of Fredbear. However, you go with the good ending route in Day Shift 3, the real Fredbear shows up at the end, so I don't know. It's really strange and confusing. The five original phone guys. The original five phone guys were managers and they were Harry, Joe, Abel, Everett, and Terrence. All five of these guys have chilling backstories that you can learn in Day Shift 3 by hiring them and talking to them. However, Harry is considered Generation 1 where the other four are considered Generation 0. The difference between the generations being that Generation 0s could remember their past lives and they would regularly attempt to contact their past families and then Generation 1s, they were stripped from that memory. The original Scott Cawthon phone guy who's the first is meant to be Generation 0 so maybe he's meant to be one of the original five instead of Harry. The phone guys in this game have interesting lore, man. Abel. Abel is one of the original five phone guys first mentioned in Day Shift 3. Everyone essentially hated him and he would die later in a shooting. There's a theory that the man in the Candy the Cat suit was the one who did it. A lot of people then started to either not know him or they did know him but didn't want to talk about him. Before his death, he would be the one behind the company logs but he would be replaced by Harry. Abel serves as another interesting part of the phone guys lore, I'll say. Old Sport has a dick tattoo. Yes, Jack Kennedy apparently has a dick tattoo that also says demonic babies are no joke. Yep, right, moving on. The actual way to get the awesome ending. In Day Shift 1, there's two ways to get the awesome ending. The first and easiest way is to name yourself Direct Doggo at the beginning of the game once you're given the ability to name yourself. It'll go straight to the awesome ending. The other way is to get Steven to owe you a favor, which you must use on getting a personal doggo. He'll be given such on the final day. The awesome ending beats so fucking cubies with the doggos. Old Sport dies no matter which ending you get in Day Shift of Freddy's 3. Now, while Jack does die in a lot of the endings in Day Shift 3, not all of them. In the Connect 4, Flamey, and High IQ endings, there's no resemblance of Jack dying at all. However, in the rest of the endings, he does face some type of death. Whether it's implied like in the Foul ending, where you can assume he gets killed by Godred, or in the Evil Route ending, where he gets possessed by Henry, and then the rest are actual clear deaths. In the Good ending, he burns. In End, he just dies in the hospital, and in Soapy ending version 3, he gets a death sentence. So while he does die in some endings, not all of them. Fuck this, I'd rather quit game development than type this dialogue out. So I remember seeing this piece of dialogue in Day Shift 2, but I cannot remember exactly where it comes from in the game, and the internet certainly didn't help out either. If I recall, I think it's said whenever something weird or sexual is being discussed in game and it just says this, and yeah. Let me know in the comments if you know when this shows up in the game, because I for the life of me cannot figure it out. Maybe it's not even Day Shift 2, maybe it's in the first game, I don't know.
Old Sport's real name is Jack Kennedy. Yeah, Old Sport, aka the protagonist, aka the orange man himself, his real name is Jack Kennedy. It's revealed in Day Shift 2, and there's nothing else really to it. That's his name. Old Sport opened the Dago location. Now, there's a location mentioned throughout the Day Shift series that is otherwise known as the Doggo location, which closed because of 57 total doggos barking continuously. Doggos were banned from performing at Freddy's location since. Now, I don't recall the evidence that Jack opened the location, but it's possible knowing him. The Lorax was meant to be in Day Shift at Freddy's 1. This is referring to how the Dr. Seuss character, the Lorax, was going to be put in Day Shift 1, similar to how characters like Pal Cool Cat or Far 4 appear, probably as parody. Direct Doggo stated on the Day Shift of Freddy's Reddit that forgetting to add the Lorax in was his biggest regret from developing Day Shift 1, and he thinks it's too late to add him in. Such a shame. Henry is a World War II veteran. While Harry is a confirmed veteran of the Vietnam War, it's said that Henry is a World War II veteran. Unlike Harry's service though, Henry's is not directly confirmed and I'm not sure where he came from. If you know where the source of this apparent piece of trivia is, let me know in the comments. The Game Jolt comments were real comments. Now this entry is referring to the Game Jolt comments that Jack is able to leave on the Day Shift 2 Game Jolt page in Day Shift 2 via the office computer. While I don't think they're directly real comments, they're similar to actual comments Doggo would get in his Game Jolt comment sections, basically a parody of those comments, full of kids asking for beta testing spots, Day Shift 3, making anything foxy jokes, you know, typical shit. Storytime at Freddy's this was a FNAF fan game by Direct Doggo in the earlier days where it's a game that basically tells a story with options and paths you can take, sort of similar to Day Shift in a way. You're playing as a guy named Jeff who's working at a Utah Freddy's location. There was a sequel planned but it was long cancelled. This game just serves now as an interesting piece in Doggo's game development history. Roger is the bravest phone guy. Now, I'm wondering if this entry is worded to be sarcastic or something, because I wouldn't describe Roger as brave, so to say. He seems so uneased and stutters a lot. I mean, his confrontation skills against Jack are something to behold, but I wouldn't say he's the bravest phone guy. Was it me, teasers? This entry is referring to how in Day Shift 2, if you use the office computer, you can look at scottgames.com. However, the catch is that the teasers on here are not actual FNAF teasers, are instead parodies of the usual scottgames.com teasers, specifically the was it me question mark FNAF 4 teasers. There's a total of 4 in the game. There's the doggo teaser, a weird render of Nightmare Fredbear, a teaser with Dave in it that asks to guess how many toddlers he strangled, and a teaser with Breadbear that says perhaps it was me or whatever, I don't know. After the final teaser, Peter will come in and tell Jack to stop looking at his website. This part of the game's hilarious. Oscar is a sexual predator. Now, while it isn't directly confirmed Oscar is a sexual predator, it's heavily implied by the way he acts. He's overly sexual. Oscar is the foxy stripper in Day Shift 3 that Jack hires after whoever phone guy puts up an advertisement on the internet. Oscar came in with an immediate response. He would literally do anything just as long as he gets to wear the foxy suit off duty. So yeah, very interesting character. Peter is anti-immigration. In Day Shift 2, if you go to the party room and scream about how Party Room 2 is better, Peter will tell you off, and then he'll eventually strangle you for encouraging immigration. Yep, Peter is anti-immigration. What an interesting thing to include in the game. The copyright infringement ending. This entry is referring to a scrapped ending in Day Shift of Freddy's 1 where Jack would be able to murder the five children without Dave and then on the final day, Dave would kidnap and then kill Jack for his copyright infringement. Some fans dubbed it as the kidnapped ending or the murdered ending. I wish this ending made it in the final release of the game because this is honestly hilarious and probably would have been one of my favorite endings in the game along with the gnarly ending and tragic ending. Godred is real. I don't know what this entry is referring to specifically, but I could talk about the origins and inspiration of Godred. Now, believe it or not, Godred is actually based off of a character from Thomas the Tank Engine, specifically from the books. There's also a character in them named Godred who has almost a similar coloring to Godred from Day Shift. 
Godred's face in the game even being from an Erdl toy of Godred from Thomas, and the other faces Godred makes in the game are borrowed from other Thomas characters as well. As well in the books, Godred would basically fall off the mountain and die, and his parts would be used as spare parts for the railway, which by the way, may I add, is pretty violent for a children's book, but this whole mountain aspect of this book character could also be the reason why in Day Shift you can sacrifice a goat to Day Shift Godred. Simple reference to mountain goats. Also, Thomas's Godred's death may also be the reason why Day Shift Godred is very tied to death and mystery in the games. It's very interesting, I'll say. I see this as somewhat similar to Cool Cat and Far 4's appearances in Day Shift 1 and the whole Dayman vs. Nightman is always sunny Philadelphia shit in Day Shift 2 where it's basically parody, except here it's way more subtle and dare I say cleverly written. Good stuff. Henry possesses Jack at the end of Day Shift of Freddy's 3 evil route. In Day Shift 3, if you go through the evil route, you and Dave go to Vegas, but Dave is strangely unhappy. As an effort to be happy, Dave shows Jack the Faz Bunker that he built himself. Even after the tour with the final room, Jack still feels unhappy. Then Henry out of nowhere takes control of Jack and basically breaks Dave. Then Henry starts talking to Jack about how easy it was to manipulate Dave and he didn't see him as a partner, but then he starts seeing Jack as a partner and they do become partners. Henry would be using Jack as a vessel. After Jack laughs and Henry states he'll always come back, the game crashes. What a very interesting ending. Henry's just straight up to Dave with how he really feels about him and the fact that Henry is using Jack as his vessel to come back, oh my goodness. Direct Dogman was drunk for the majority of Day Shift of Freddy's 2's development. Yes, allegedly during the development of Day Shift 2, Doggo was drunk for a lot of it, which is fucking wacky and insane, holy shit. Day Shift of Freddy's 3, the final chapter. On April Fool's Day 2017, Direct Doggo seemingly released what was the demo to Day Shift of Freddy's 3, a game that at the time people, even Doggo himself, thought wouldn't be happening. This Day Shift 3 demo ended up being a complete reskin of Day Shift 1 where every character is replaced by a Doggo and there's changes in the dialogue, etc. This was a charming April Fool's prank and little did we know we would be getting an actual Day Shift of Freddy's 3. Breadbear is only a reoccurring nightmare. I don't know exactly what this one means, but maybe it's referring how Breadbear, for a secondary recurring character, appears consistently. He's had his most screen time in Day Shift 1, but in Day Shift 2 and 3, he appears sporadically. Don't know. The High IQ Ending this entry is referring to how to get one of the endings in Day Shift 3, the high IQ ending. You must name yourself Rick Sanchez and then refuse to salvage Dave Trap. This will result in Dave Trap appearing as an eggplant later on in Tuesday, which then gets you the ending. The ending is based off of the Pickle Rick meme from Rick and Morty, and the ending screen being from a popular video around the time where a man does the Pickle Rick thing at a McDonald's, making a complete ass out of himself. Hilarious ending. Day Shift of Freddy's 4 was planned at some point. Now, I wasn't able to find anything on this. The closest thing I got to was this tvtrips.org page that states that a Day Shift 3, 4, and sister location would be made, but not really because of Doug's personal reasons, but cited Day Shift 3 was made anyway. I don't even know the credibility of this page as no real sources are linked, and there's nothing else online about it, it seems. The only other thing is this game gel devlog from Doggo talking about why Day Shift 4 won't happen and to stop asking for one, so yeah. Woodrow. This one ties to an entry from earlier. Woodrow is the name of a mechanic for Freddy's, and he would eventually become a phone guy. He apparently invented Music Man to keep Godred away, which allegedly ended up failing, and Godred took Woodrow away. Music Man couldn't even find him. Woodrow has also allegedly performed maintenance on Godred. Woodrow's name is redacted throughout any mention of him in the game, and his name would end up being revealed by Doggo in a Tumblr post when asked for his name. This whole thing provides an area of mystery to the game, which is very interesting. Godred only visits graveyards of people who he's taken away. While not exactly confirmed, it's heavily theorized and implied that whenever Godred hangs out at graveyards, as it's said he loves doing, it may be the unfortunate victims of his that he has taken away. Godred visits you in your sleep, if he visits you twice, you're gone. A bell toll even being heard after nearly every mention of him. Godred is indeed tied to death, especially when it comes to those who worship him. The Day Shift of Freddy's WikiLeaks 
During the development of Day Shift 3, there were leaks for the game posted on the Day Shift of Freddy's wiki, which has unfortunately caused Doggo to not have that much respect for the wiki. Some of the wiki's admins didn't approve of it, thankfully, but leaks for an upcoming game you're working on getting out there always sucks and it's very unfortunate. Negative comments on Game Jolt calls direct Dogman to leave the internet. Basically, Doggo would disappear off the face of the internet for a long while. He deleted nearly every single one of his profiles, as well as the game pages for the Day Shift games which ended up getting archived and reposted by other people. For a long time, it was thought that the reason for this was because of harassment by fans and other people online so that he went on and quit the internet. People thought he was gone. It wasn't until 2018 that he did in fact return, and he publicly stated that he was unfortunately hospitalized for very serious health issues. The lack of support was what drove him to wanting to leave the internet for good for a long while, he resumed development on Day Shift 3 and put the game pages back up for the series as well as coming back to socials in general. It's situations like this where you have to remember it's a human being or beings behind the series that you love and they need to be treated with respect. It's sickening. I say this about every iceberg I've covered so far, and I'm gonna say it again. This one was interesting to cover. Obviously, some of these were more weird, but I had fun, especially since I got to talk about three of my favorite fan games of all time and basically everything surrounding them. To this day, it makes sense why Day Shift to Freddy's is seen as a classic fan game series to many. It's funny, it's witty, it's engaging, it checks nearly every mark from every bullet point of potential it had. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm obviously gonna continue making iceberg videos because you guys love the hell out of them, and I wanna do more fan game icebergs at some point. Some ideas I had were candies and flumpties. Those could be fun. Well guys, I'll see you all in the next thing I do. Oh, and one more thing, be on the lookout for my one hour fan game review analysis of each day shift of Freddy's game. I've been working on this video for a long time and it's finally coming out, so if you guys enjoyed this video, you may like this one. Toodles!